Hello and welcome. Um, in this video, we'll be talking about SAP connectors in Power BI. Uh, we'll be actually building a series of um, uh, videos covering SAP connectors in Power BI. Uh, and in this one, we'll be covering some of the basics of the connectors. Um, with, uh, in terms of connectors, uh, out of the box, there are two connectors uh, available in SAP, uh, for, sorry, in Power BI for SAP. Um, SAP uh, HANA connector and uh, SAP BW connector. And HANA connector is built on SAP's HANA ODBC driver uh, and the uh, BW connector uses uh, SAP's .NET uh, connector 3.0. Uh, with the BW connector, there are two options available, uh, either to directly connect to the application server or you can connect to the message server. Uh, I would pick connecting to the message server because uh, you'll be utilizing the load balancing feature available. Um, I believe application feature was the uh, first option that was released by Microsoft and then over a period of time they added the message server uh, connection as well. Now, uh, thing to note is both of these connectors are certified by SAP. Let's start uh, talking first about the HANA connector and then I'll move on to BW connector. <coughs> Uh -huh. The HANA connector connects to uh, analytical views, calculation views, or composite models uh, in um, SAP. Uh, and then it um, supports both direct query and import mode. Uh, also, um, one thing to note here is in import mode, you, you have an option to write your own SQL statement. If you, if you want to connect to an underlying table with rows and columns, you can write that uh, in, and put that uh, SQL statement in this uh, box here, uh, optional SQL statement box, and it will work for you, right? Uh, but this works uh, only in import mode. Uh, another question that I keep getting asked is, uh, does the HANA connector support S4 for, for HANA or ECC? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, currently, it does not support, um, and I'm not seeing anything uh, released by Microsoft uh, stating that it will be supported in the near future. Um, but what, um, could be the option is maybe you could use the ODBC uh, connector available uh, in Power BI and connect to these layers or build a custom connector. Now, uh, moving on about this uh, SAP connectors, there are two flavors of uh, SAP HANA connector, uh, the multidimensional mode and relational mode. Now, multidimensional mode is uh, provides you with enterprise uh, level performance uh, and in, uh, direct query mode and um, uh, and uh, import mode, it supports parent-child hierarchies, SSL is supported. Uh, and I did notice that any new feature that is released by Microsoft uh, is released for this multidimensional mode. Right? Um, and and uh, some of the new features are not supported in the relational mode. For example, the new newly released uh, edit variable feature is only supported in multidimensional mode. Now, to give a little uh, history, relational mode was the first version of this connector that was released. Um, and this was uh, not, uh, the performance of this connector was not really great. It created a lot of nested queries, which uh, slowed down performance. And some of the key features like parent-child hierarchy and non-additive measures were not supported. So uh, I believe over a period of time, Microsoft uh, released the uh, multidimensional mode, which is now the default mode. I think they have left this uh, mode again to support uh, backward compatibility. Uh, now, a lo lot of uh, uh, clients I've seen try to use relational mode because it supports composite modeling. Now, what composite modeling is, uh, is basically you can have multiple direct query queries uh, and maybe even some uh, uh, import mode queries and you can mash it up uh, in Power BI. Um, whereas this is not, this kind of feature is not supported in multidimensional mode. In multidimensional mode, uh, the expectation is all the data modeling is done uh, in the SAP layer and Power BI is used just as a visualization layer. Um, you know, but in some scenarios, clients want want to do, still do the data modeling in Power BI, but use, um, uh, uh, but uh, so they, they try to use relational mode, which I've not seen any, a lot of clients go, start this journey, but I've not seen anybody successfully implement it. Uh, 
So try to stay away from it, but you know, if you really want to use it, you can go to options mode, uh, select the direct query option, and you need to enable uh, this feature where, this, where you see treat SAP HANA as a relational source. Okay, now moving on to the BW connector. This connector supports composite models and BEX queries, and it also supports both direct query and import mode. What it does not support is DSOs. You cannot connect uh, directly to a DSO or write a query or anything like that. Um, now, uh, to give a little bit of history on this, the version one of this connector was was uh, used the NetWeaver RFC. Uh, again, it was really slow. We ran into a lot of memory issues and so forth. Uh, and uh, over a period of time, Microsoft released version two, uh, which is awesome. It, uh, I've seen about um, 75 to 80% imp improvement in performance. Uh, I hardly run into um, memory issues and so forth. So. By default, uh, version two is what is uh, available, but they've left version one in there again, maybe uh, for backward compatibility. Um, uh, the question I keep getting asked is, hey, my uh, business object report for the same exact, when I connect to the same exact BEX query, uh, runs in one second, whereas Power BI takes three seconds or something along those lines. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, uh, Business objects or any SAP tools have access to uh, the BICS interface, which is a proprietary uh, SAP interface. Tools like uh, third-party tools like Power BI does not have access to this interface. So Power BI goes through this MDX protocol, uh, which adds more, um, uh, it's more time consuming. So you, you'll never get the same performance as a business objects tool. Um, but from what I've heard, I've not tested this, but I've, what I've heard from my colleagues is, uh, uh, you know, third party, uh, among the third party tools, uh, the performance of Power BI is on par or better than tools like Tableau and Click and so forth. I can't vouch for that, but that's what I've heard from, um, you know, my, my colleagues and a few of the clients. Now, one thing to note here is if you are connect using the BW connector and uh, the, some of the objects don't show up in the Power BI navigation, uh, make sure this uh, allow external access to this query is enabled. Once you do that, uh, you can uh, get access to this. Now, uh, these two uh, screenshots, uh, uh, I've taken this from the official uh, Microsoft um, white paper. Uh, and that white paper is pretty detailed. So if you want to get into get more uh, details, you can uh, look up uh, for SAP BW uh, white paper uh, with Power BI. Uh, moving on. All right. So the next thing that uh, comes uh, that I get asked is uh, single sign-on. Uh, is it supported? Uh, yes, it is supported for both SAP HANA and BW. Uh, in terms of with HANA, both Kerberos and SAML is supported. For BW, Kerberos is supported and uh, lately they uh, started, uh, upgraded it to use a common crypto library. Now, single sign-on is, uh, from what I've seen, it's, a, it's supported in direct query mode, but a couple of months ago, a new feature was released where uh, for some data sources, uh, a single sign-on was supported, is supported for import mode as well. Uh, I've not tested it for SAP, uh, but it might work. Right? Uh, so something for me to test, and you know, if you uh, if you have uh, if you have the need requirement, you can t try it out as well. The next question I get uh, asked is, okay, you know, we have SSO, we uh, we know we have got a multi-dimensional mode and all these other features, but when do I use direct query? When do I use import mode? There are so many pros and cons. Um, what I tell uh, my clients is use direct query um, only when needed, right? When If you want to use the underlying security that you have uh, defined in SAP and it cannot be easily replicated in Power BI, uh, that's one case, use case. Or if you want real-time uh, data or your data volume is so big that you cannot uh, bring it efficiently uh, into Power BI. Uh, those are the main reasons to use direct query, uh, right? Um, if not, uh, because with, with direct query, there are a lot of restrictions that come into play. Um, so 
and also authoring the reports is kind of cumbersome. There is no, uh, every, uh, while authoring a report every time you drag a field or uh, do any filtering, a query sent over to SAP, it makes development uh, cumbersome as well. Um, and you do lose a lot of uh, features that come by default with Power BI, like natural query language or filtering your reports based on measures, things along um, those lines. So uh, my, my suggestion is, uh, uh, try to use import mode as much as possible. And from what I've seen with clients, they typically use uh, direct query for about 20% of their reports. And uh, for 80% of the reports, they can uh, they can use import mode. Uh, this is one feature I, I like to talk about. This is uh, SAP edit variables. This feature was released uh, uh, end of uh, 2019 uh, and uh, uh, th this was a very this is a very popular uh, feature. Um, I've had a lot of clients talk to talk about this, and the reason is uh, uh, th this feature was uh, before this feature was available. If I am a report author and I connect to a Bex query uh, or a Hana view which has some variables exposed, let's say uh, fiscal year and product code is exposed to me, I pick a certain fiscal year when I'm building a report. And once I'm done building, if I publish it, that uh, end users do not did not have access to edit that uh, variable. The, the report was stuck with whatever the report author picked uh, in those variables. Now with this feature, uh, end users have that capability. So to enable it, you would go into uh, options dialog for that particular Power BI desktop file and enable um, allow end users to change SAP variables for this report. Once this is done, if your report is in direct query mode, you have single sign-on configured and you're using multi-dimensional connector. Uh, this will light up and end users can uh, expand the filter section of the report. They'll see an edit variable link. They can use that to change the variable. So this is a, this is a key feature. A uh, lot of clients uh, where I work with have asked for this and uh, they're really happy with uh, how it works. So this is the last thing I want to cover uh, in today's uh, video is uh, uh, what is not supported in SAP BW connector in direct query mode. Uh, there's a whole uh, list of it in the official Microsoft doc. Uh, these are the key ones that I get asked. You know, local calculations in BEX queries. Now, uh, remember pa the Power BI uses the MDX layer. So if you um, have any specific local calculations in BEX query, Power BI does not see it. Uh, so uh, it doesn't work. Uh, currency formatting and units of measures are not exposed to Power BI. Uh, similarly, multiple hierarchies um, are not supported. For example, if you have multiple sales hierarchies, you can pick only one, you cannot pick multiple. Text variables is not supported. Uh, in SAP, you could have a, a variable, for, like in this example, if you have a year variable, uh, year actuals, if you in your report, if you pick, let's say 2019, you'll see 2019 actuals. Uh, this feature is not supported in uh, Power BI. All right. Um, and I want to end this with just a few key takeaways. Uh, limit your, uh, the key ones are limit, limit the use of direct query mode. Try to go import mode as much as possible. Um, use the multidimensional mode in HANA connector. I've not seen anybody successfully use relational mode for a production quality report. Uh, and use version two of the BW connector, which is the default uh, connector. All right, uh, that's it in this video. Uh, we'll have a series, like I said, coming out with a bunch of uh, videos talking about SAP connectors. Stay tuned and uh, talk to you later.